Dear Jesus, now we want to start our chapel, which will be led by Miss Yamima. Hopefully, we can understand the meaning of today's chapel, and all can run smoothly. We can also get something important and helpful in our daily life. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome back again to our chapel. This morning, I'm so happy that I can see you again. Student, we must be thankful that finally we have passed our whole week with the healthy body and tomorrow we can enjoy our weekend. Now, so before we start to listen to the God's word, let us prepare our heart, our mind, and ourselves by singing these songs together. We need to praise his name because this song reminds us for how big the God's love for us. Jesus already came to this world and then died on the cross to save us from the sin. So let us glorify his name by singing these songs together. Grief. 
it's time for us to listen to the God's word. And I wish all of you already prepared for your Bible, ya. Yeah? Now, before we read the Bible, let us pray first. Uh, I want all of you to close your eyes, fold your hands, and let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the healthy body. Thank you for everything that you already did in our life, especially for this whole week. Lord, now we are going to listen to your word. Please bless us. Holy Spirit, please help us to do understand about your word. Please bless Miss Yemima so Miss Yemima can tell your words well and then the students can listen to your words. In your name we pray. Amen. As the day of the Passover celebration drew near, the chief priests and the teachers of the law began to look for ways to get rid of Jesus. As Jesus had traveled around teaching and preaching all across the land, many people had begun to follow him, which made the religious leaders worry that they would lose their power. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples. Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard to come up with a way to betray Jesus. Delighted at the idea of getting one of Jesus' trusted disciples to help them, they agreed to pay him for his assistance. Judas then waited for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when there wasn't a crowd around to witness what happened. On the day of the Passover celebration, Jesus sent Peter and John to find a place for them to have their Passover meal. Jesus told them that inside the city, they would find a man carrying a jug of water who would lead them to a room where they could prepare the meal. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. When the meal was ready, Jesus sat at the table with his disciples. Jesus said to them, I am so thankful to share this Passover meal with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the man who is going to betray me is sitting at this table. I will carry out my mission as it has been ordered, but sadness and misery will come to the man who betrays me. The disciples looked at each other and began to question which one of them would do such a thing. The disciples then began to question which of them was the greatest of Jesus' followers. Jesus said to them, Kings selfishly use their power over their people, and rulers unjustly give favor to some. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be humble and serve others. Jesus continued, saying, For who is greater, the person who sits at the table and is served, or the person who serves? It seems obvious that the one who is served is greatest. But I am among you as one who serves. You have stood by me in my trials. I give to you a kingdom, just as my father gave one to me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We will learn from the Bible from Luke chapter 22, verse 14 until 71. My students will read for some verses. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. 
But behold, the hand of him who betrayed me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he betrayed. So, this is Jesus. Jesus is our Lord who came to this world and died on the cross to save us from the sin. Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about the God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did so many miracles by calming the storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did, did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. So, they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas one of the Jesus' disciples agreed to betray Jesus and give him offer to the religious leaders for some money. On the day of the Passover celebration, Jesus sent Peter and John to find a place for them to have their Passover meal. Jesus told them that the inside of the city, they would find a man carrying a jug of water who would lead them to a room where they could prepare the meal. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. When the meal was ready, Jesus sat at the table with his disciple. Jesus said to them, I'm so thankful to share this Passover meal with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. And then he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you, but the man who is going to betray me sitting at this table. I will carry out my mission as it has been ordered but sadness and misery will come to the man who betrays me. The disciples looked at each other and began to question, which one of them would do such a thing? Long short story, Jesus needed through some process before he went up to the cross. Jesus was in the garden praying and Judas showed the man who was Jesus. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council. They shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserved to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder. Crucify him! We want him dead! And because of the pressures of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on his clothes were thrown and tax from him and crown made out of the thrones was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he need help because he could not to do it on his own. When Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified called the skull, the soldiers around him knelt him to the cross and wait for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people sought to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew. He had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. A soldier watching the whole things and said, This man surely was the son of God. So student, what we can learn from today's chapel? So here I have some points. What we can learn from today's chapel? First, it's about sacrifice. For your information, is such a big deal. Though. When Jesus decided to come to this world and then become the servant, 
can die on the cross to save us from the sin. It's not a simple thing. Because we know the nature of Jesus is God. So, but with humility, he decided to come to this world and then become a servant and then die on the cross to save us from the sin. Just imagine that Jesus decided the world to die for us. What will happen? That means forever we will be the self of sins. Why? Because we know that even we do the good works for the rest of our life, it cannot pay for our sin. So that's the reason why it's called as the amazing grace. Because only by His grace. And then we must be thankful, we must be grateful for this amazing grace for us. Then the second point is about Holy Communion is two remembrance about what Jesus did which is to save us from sins. And then the third one is about the humility. Like I already said before, it is just because of his humility, Jesus' humility, so we can be saved from our death. Because uh, of Jesus' humility, he decided to come to this world and then become a servant and then die on the cross. Now, so we, as the children of God, we need to follow his step. That's the reason why we need to love one another, we need to serve one another, we need to forgive people, and many things. Uh, maybe I can give you an example like this. You and your mom, so there is, will be the same things between you and your mom. Maybe for your characteristic, maybe for your attitude, maybe you have the same uh, favorite food or favorite drink, or many things. Uh, that's the reason why you have the same things with your mom because you are the children of your mom, right? Now, it seems like us because we are the children of our father, which is our father in heaven. We need to have the same things with our father. The reason is because we are the children of him, so we need to have the same things with him. Then, the last point is about obeying. So, just look to what Jesus already did. He was beaten. He was reviled and died on the cross. At that time, Jesus became very lowly, even more despicable than animals. Now, so we just need to continue his step and stay obey to what God said to us to do. Our Lord Jesus Christ already gave us samples about obey. So it happens when Jesus need to through the hard time of his life. Uh, I will read from Bible. Luke chapter 22, verse 41 until 42. It happens when Jesus went praise on the Mount of Olives. So, and he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. What did Jesus say uh, about this one? Because at that time, Jesus was very scared. Jesus know it's hard for he to do this one. So, uh, Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. But Jesus said, Jesus continued, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. I repeat once again what Jesus said, But it's not my will, but yours be done. So this is the examples when Jesus just obeyed for what God already told him, what he needed to do at that time. So, we as the children of God, we need to follow his example, we need to follow his step, we need to stay obeyed. If God told us, do not cheat, yeah, just follow it because God already told us, do not cheat. So we need to obey, we need to follow what God said to us. If God said, please love one another, serve one another, proclaiming Christ, and then forgive people, forgive your enemies, just follow. because. Remember, obey is about follow what God said to us. We are the children of God. Jesus already gave us example how to obey, how to stay obey, even at the hard time, even uh, the nature, the human nature of Jesus don't want to do it, but Jesus stay obey. Jesus follow. Jesus do what God said. Uh, what God told him to do. So we, as the children of God, we need to follow his examples. We need to follow his path.
because we are the children of God and we need to be held like the Christ every day. And another reason is because we already received amazing grace. We know what Jesus already did on the cross for us, for our life. It's not a simple thing. It's really a big deal. That's such amazing grace. And only by His grace, we can receive God's love. We can have Uh, we can have back our relationship with God just only by His grace. So students, the points that we already learned from today's chapters, there are four. First, about sacrifice of Jesus. And then the second, the Holy, Holy Communion is to remember about what Jesus did for us. And then the third one is about obey. And then the, the last one is about the humility. So we, as the children of God, we need to follow His example. We need to follow a Jesus step. We need to follow. Uh, we need to be help like a Christ every day. Because only one reason, because we already received the amazing grace for our life. So we already finished with our chapel. I wish the Holy Spirit will help you. Uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you to the understand. Uh, about today's chapel. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your watch in this morning. Thank you for everything that you already done in our life. And Holy Spirit, please help us to understand about your watch this morning and also about your will in our life. Thank you for this amazing grace. Help us, Lord, to be half more like you every day help us to stay away so we can do what God said to us it's not easy for us to stay away but we know we have Holy Spirit in our life so Holy Spirit help us always remind us that this grace is not only a simple things but this is amazing grace we need to be God grateful we need to be thankful and we need to glorify your name through our daily life thank you lord for everything now we want to continue with another things please bless us for today in your name we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah Praise